How much worse do I play when sick? Much worse. Much worse. Everyone does. I guess I'll do a transform too this time. Hmm. Curious. There's no three leap path, huh? All right. Go here. damage. No, let's take an Infernal Blade. Infernal Blade's cool. Infernal Blade does stuff. Act 1, which Ironclad common or uncommon attacks are worth taking a second copy of? Twin Strike. Almost Strike. Potentially Uppercut. Infernal Blade, my beloved. Um, is that a kill? We can do 8 plus... 30, no. No. It's good damage, though. Okay, let's double defend here. Perfected strike, potentially. I might be hosing myself here. Now, let's just play the strike so I don't die. Of course, then I do get the triple strike draw. That's fine. Where are my strikes? Fiend fire. Fiend fire my strikes. Scammed. Damn it. Where are my strikes? What are you doing here, demon form? Get out of here. Threat level midnight. Thanks for the 11 months. Yeah, we just lost our streak to an ecto start. So it goes. There we go. Add a second copy of pommel strike, especially with demon form. We want some pommel strikes in here. Looks like we got to iron out our strategies. That's right. I think I gotta iron out my draw order here, too. Oh. Onset nonsense with seven months. Thank you, thank you. Maybe take Cleave going into a Burning Elite here. Especially with Demon Form. Yeah, I should take the AoE option. This pot's even worse than Speed Pot. PF Hayes, thanks for the Prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sim Club. Ah, yes. Classic. If you're losing to the Elite, simply upgrade a card. Cleave Plus looks powerful here. Could also upgrade Infernal Blade. Is Cleave generally a good Act 1 take? C Cleave makes you dramatically better against the hard pool of Act 1, which is pretty valuable for Ironclad. It means if you run into four gremlins, four gremlins or five slimes, you'll do a lot better. We can actually upgrade them both. Plus 16 is 24, yes. 
Yes. Get wrecked, friends. What about a third pummel strike? We've had second pummel strike, yes, but what about third pummel strike? No, actually, with two pummel strikes, I really like a headbutt to let us put something back on top of the deck. That does mean we're a little bit attack heavy, but with a demon form, maybe that's not the worst thing to be. There's also anger here, a zero cost attack that works well with lots of card draw. But I've already got a zero cost attack. Actually, I've got two of them. So I'm taking a headbutt. Oh, demon form of the gods. Good job. All right, here's a dad joke for the crowd, courtesy of Fluffy Bullet. Your name made me think of this one. What does the hermit in the spire say when he has too much block? Calibers would be good here. No refunds. Just keep the Infernal Blade for one more turn. Build the strength up. Wakey wakey. High caliper joke. <laughs> Excellent. Quality speed potion opportunity. We can double defend for 10 health saved. Anytime you get more than 5 health out of a speed potion in Act 1, you should use it. Rule of thumb. Ash. Easy life. Flexpot would kill... I'm healing six, though, so we just defend. Kill next turn. Take 15, heal six, so we're down nine. Keep this potion for nine health. Defeated our Burning Elite, no problem. Now we have a Toy Ornithopter, rewarded for saving the potion. Get our Emerald Key, and Offering is back. I'm super taking the Offering this time. We have two sources of healing so far. Power Through is also back. How's it going, Krogzar? And a Boat Thingy to block on turn one, even better. Great set of relics so far. This is also a relic we could have changed last run entirely. Just one decent combat relic. Would have made a big difference. Anger the mushrooms. Three mushrooms. This is the kind of fight where cleave makes a massive difference for Ironclad Act 1. This is much, much easier with cleave than without. Can Infernal Blade make Bash? No. No, I can't make basic cards. Can't make Strike either. That was a great fight. We get free healing, money, the odd mushroom, meaning when we're vulnerable, we take less damage. We're offered an Armaments, which I'm going to take because I have added literally no block cards to this deck so far. And I feel like we want at least one. The fact that it upgrades another card is nice, I guess. I don't think it matters that much. Do I ever just play the demon form here? Block five. Play three attacks instead. I think I should just play the demon form. Starting a new save file and restarting from zero. Hey, that can be a really fun thing to do in roguelites. Kind of like, ask yourself to get back through the basic difficulty levels. Let's slaughter this fool. Hello? Blessing of the Forge can upgrade all of our cards. Third Pummel Strike? Is that too many? That might be too many. <laughs> mm. 
Binding of Isaac I, feels like a game is specifically made for that, cats. Definitely a great game to, to start for fresh on. Totally different experience. I'm gonna skip this one. I would take one that said plus on it. I don't think we demon form in this fight. Probably just gonna use flex pot with our cleave to slap these fools. Espresso is fuel. What a name, what a player. Thanks for the prime sub and welcome to the cozy sub club. Espresso is fuel. So I'm going to offering first here. Rampage. Okay, yeah, this is an amazing turn for the flex bots. So let's just do it. Effortlessly dispatched. We now have a lizard tail and too many hit points for Hexaghost. And an uppercut, which I'm super taking. Doink. Emu like bird with 45 months coming up on four full years. White goblin with two months coming up on one full year. Eventually. I've seen some pretty legendary uh, Twitch usernames, for sure. And speaking of legendary, this shop is pretty legendary. On sale impervious. Bag of preparation is pretty good, especially with the anchor. I like it a lot. It's not the world's worst heavy blade, but I don't think you should pay for a common attack in this position. Um, can I do bag of prep, remove offering? No, not quite. Probably just bag of prep offering then. Although I really do value removes, I'm already down two strikes. No, that was last run. One kid's friend. How do I analyze a shop? Ooh. Kinda, so here's what 7,000 hours of experience does. I kind of like unfocus my eyes at the middle of the shop and then the most valuable things just kind of like pop out. <laughs> Kind of like my eyes get drawn to certain things. So that's why sometimes I'll name them in weird orders. Like I'll name the third card and then the first relic and then the second card. It's so like, oh, these are the order that I noticed these things are good in. <laughs> you mean Chrysalis? Yeah. Or it might also be the card art too, right? Impervious just really stands out visually. And then he can unhinges his jaw and consumes it whole. <laughs> the legendary first time chat. <laughs> I don't think the impervious means we don't get a remove, but we can afford the removes later or whatevs. Do I want another fight? Not really. I have way too many cards already. Again, I recommend adding five cards in Act 1, not ten. Although, bear in mind, three of them are rare, and two of them say draw a card on them. So I added these five. Headbutt, Infernal Blade, Armaments, Uppercut, Cleave. Those are the five I needed to add. This is all bonus. It's great. It's great. Oh yeah, and two were transformed, so we didn't take them. That's right. That's right. Two of them used to be a strike. All right, it was a false equivalence anyway, or false, false dilemma. Is demon form worth it? Probably not, when the enemy has only 48 hit points. I guess I'll just arm a pummel. I guess I'll also just play the offering, because Hexaghost. Oh, you're dead. All right, good talk. 
<laughs> Four rare cards. Do I want a second demon? Actually, I might want a bloodletting. Bloodletting seems freaking awesome here. Get in here, bloodletting. Cards OP. I guess I'll upgrade this now. Bloodletting lets us play the demon form and also the other cards, which is pretty sweet. Hmm, that almost makes me want a swift pot. Not having uppercut upgraded is also kind of weak. Swift pot later. Rampage is actually good in this fight, unironically. This I won't play, I don't want the dazed. Can Arma the uppercut? That's a good start. Maybe I'll headbutt the armaments. Yeah, because we can do headbutt, armaments, play offering, play armaments, play demon form. And now we win. Uncooked Noom. Thanks for nine months. The Baylor Itch has returned. That was like a... kind of ailment. I wish you a swift recovery from the itch. It's a cream for that. That's right. What's the biggest Hexaghost attack you've faced? Highest I remember is um, 13 by 6, which was in Act 3. Feed versus Immolate here. Did you know that I play games other than Slay the Spire? It's true. Catch me over on Baylor Lord Plays for card games, RPGs, strategy games, and more. It's like a really good position for feed. We've got a Lizard Tail as well as good sustain. So big reward on max health scaling. We also have an Armaments Plus that can upgrade the feed, allowing us to scale our max health real big like. That sounds good to me. And a headbutt to let us control where the feed is. No runic pyramid. I'm down for Black Star on this run. We sacrifice the additional energy of a boss relic, but we have offering and bloodletting to do that for us. And free block on turn one. So let's see if we can kill elites and just start accumulating mass relics here. We also have a lizard tail such that we can survive a low roll in an elite fight, basically. That said, we can only get two elites this act. That's not desirable, but it is how it is. That is how it is. Looks like the best path for that is probably this one. We'll just get wing boots, that's right. At the very end. And then maybe this is... This will just be thwack, it's fine. It's totally fine. Also, we're not that strong, so maybe it's better that we don't fight so many elites, just saying. Bloodletting lets me play the Impervious too. Leaves me sick, so I might as well. Might as well. Probably worth it too. Okay. okay, but why though?
Are boss swaps too risky for streaking? Good question. Generally, I would say yes. For longer win streaks, anyway. Fifteen, fifteen, fifteen. Nineteen. But I have to get the energy. That's the complicated factor. So I think I have to headbutt the bloodletting here. Then use the swift potion. Get to feed, but that's fine. Take a shrug. Okay, this looks pretty good. Oh my, you guys are toast. Very, very toasty. Delicious, delicious toast. Excellent. Okay. Start gaining max health here. I take another bloodletting. I think that's unnecessary. We take a free heavy blade. I think without gaining energy from the boss relic, I probably don't want a heavy blade here. We're gonna go run clad until 20. If I get bored, I'll, I'll change before we get to 20. I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna stake my entire content career on, on this one challenge if it doesn't work out. Stunna, thanks for 18 months. A year and a half and many more to come. I almost want anger. I, oh, I didn't want anger last time. I don't want it now. Hello, pay up to pass. A reasonable fee of all your gold will do, they say. But here's the thing. You guys give me a relic. So I'm going to fight your faces. Although that's a crap turn one. Just going to be honest. It's not good. Thinking maybe we're supposed to use the Forge Pot turn one, but I'm going to see what I draw here. Yeah. Let's headbutt that. Turn two looks tough, I'm gonna be honest. It's not the correct cards to draw on turn one. Okay, that's a slight. At least do this. Arma, pummel, feed. This turn's gonna be bad though. Really bad. We're taking quite a bit now as well. Bear does way more damage next turn, so we're hoping we can kill Bear, despite the block. Looks like we hopefully can. Oh, man, Immolate's back. Unfortunately, it's not quite enough to get pointy. Let's see, we do two all enemies. 21 plus 11, 32. And I have two energy left. Uh, so we can Blessing of the Forge to take no more damage. Or we can take 12. I think the saving 12 is probably worth it. We got a blood potion. That's good healing. And the red mask. Gain Tendo. Thanks for the half year of support in advance. Keeping it real with six months. Yeah, 12 is a pretty good magic number for potions. Unless you have good reason to believe that that specific potion will save you more health in a future encounter. Like you're saving it for a specific boss encounter. That can change things, but we did not have such an expectation for the Forge Pot, so whatevs. Alright, Sneko, will you toast me again? Or am I going to do better this time? Looks like things might be a little better. Oh. Demon form, come on. Come on, demon form. Cute. Ooh. 
At least we have uh, the odd mushroom saving us some health here. That's why it's 22 and not the normal 27. Worth a shot, though. Do we take it Evolve? I don't think so. I think we have enough cards. We're not worried about statuses at the moment. Bird nerds. These three are somewhat dangerous. We don't have that many AoE options. I can eat one of them. Looks like that's a yes. TV points. Body Slam can be okay with Impervious and Armaments, but I don't trust it here. I don't trust it. Okay, we made it to our first Elite. We have still plenty of health and two potions. That's very encouraging. I expect to use the Strength Potion against the first Elite here. Uh, as far as upgrades go, I think the Offering upgrade is a big deal. It also... I don't think we're ready to upgrade Feed yet, especially since we have Armaments. We should upgrade our Card Draw instead. So let's upgrade. Oh, Uppercut's a good one, too. Actually, yeah, let's upgrade Uppercut. And then Offering next. That extra turn of Weak and Vuln, very important, especially against this particular foe. And yes, I will use the Strength Potion. This is very much a damage race. Can you do 170 damage before five or so turns? The longer the fight goes on, the worse it gets. Trust me, it gets bad. Block four, deal eight. I'll block four here. I don't want the wound that it would add to my deck. It would be undesirable. Ouch. Was that not seven by two on turn one? Yeah, I'm definitely still sick. Definitely still sick. It's all good. I'll feed, please. Yeah, weak from Red Mask. Didn't even notice, gonna be honest. On scales from the Book of Stabbing, very appropriate. Barricade. Yeah. I like that against Champ. I like it with the Essence of Steel, too. Smiling Mask. That seems pretty good. Removals are always 50 gold. We haven't actually bought a remove yet, but that's still pretty solid. Could save us at least 75 gold, probably more. Okay, this is good that we get attacked on turn one because of Red Mask and Anchor. It's basically a free turn against this foe. Otherwise, though, we're in trouble here. This is not what we wanted to see. Use the Essence of Steel here. We're well, 15 incoming. So block 14. No, never mind. Yeah, free anger. Oh boy. Block 
believe my own advice was just play the demon form. I really want that cleave. Great turn for Impervious. Good, good. We're going to save the Essence of Steel for Champ. I suppose so. Let's skip the offering on this turn. Now I can play it if I want to. Looks like I probably don't need to. Okay, you're gonna die now. No feed for us, that's okay. We're through the fight, we get two relics. That's what matters here. The Art of War, rewarding us for not playing attacks, and the Strike Dummy, making these Pummel Strikes hit quite a bit harder. And if we want one, there's a Corruption. I do like Corruption Barricade together. I will take a Corruption. Take an Inflame, too. But my face, though. Oh. the energy potion on this turn, I suppose. Deal 15 or block 3. I should deal damage. Cool. Just headbutt feed. Nail feed plus next turn. Excellent. Beautiful. Shrug plus or a disarm. First disarm is very good, but with barricade corruption, I'm taking a shrug plus here. Take the art of war, thanks. Thanks for nothing. Big stinky lizard. Oh, come on. But my block cards. I made them all free. Boo. Here we go. Yeah, Sneko is really headed out for us today. We've not had an easy time with the Sneko. I feel like I'd better play this offering. Without playing offering, I don't think we get to feed here. But now we get to feed. to rest before champ, which I guess I'm okay with. I don't think I want second wind. Ah. At resting, we could buy Panagraph. What if I bought Prismatic Shard for funsies? That sounds kind of hype, actually. Have a very strong run overall. Ah. Let's do it. <laughs> then maybe I'll buy a swift potion to save me against champ a little bit. Also five hit points. Do that. Ah. Enlightenment is also kind of hilarious, but I can no longer afford it. 
Crew grid is acceptable. Potion's what I'm going to buy, though. Corruption shard can go hard. That's right. Oh, garbage. <laughs> ah. I can't even take the max health here. Bummer. Uh, give me the curse, I guess. Ooh. Or, yeah, we can just click the die button. Use our lizard tail. Lizard tail, gain five max health, lose the curse. Hmm. Asthmatic Funk, thanks for the prime sub. Welcome to the cozy sub club. I do think I want the curse, honestly. We have a smiling mask. It's fine. It's funny that you think I need to up uh, need to rest without uh The other option. I think we're just going to upgrade probably the Feel No Pain now that we have Barricade. We can also upgrade the Barricade. We're only a three energy deck after all. I'm not taking Sneko Eye. Am I? Well, maybe I am. Hmm. Many upgrade options. We'll do Barricade. That art of war. Corruption just yet. Could Swift Potion? I don't think I need to. We'll just take a hit. Who's one plated armor? We have to rebuild the block momentarily. Lash, my child. Having Odd Mushroom for this fight is also pretty cool. next time we run. Now I can play Corruption. I'm going to do Bloodletting this turn first. No, no. Oh, it's possible, all right. It's happening to you. Uh, Reckless Charge would cause him to die to thorns. I want to eat him, though. Delicious. Delicious. Reboots. Secret Technique. Secret Technique Armament. Secret Technique Offering is really cool. Panache is cute. I'll take 
the secret technique. Put a skill from the draw pile into our hand. It's quite useful. And then we have three flavors of energy here. Dripper, Hammer, Sozu. Seems like Dripper's pretty reasonable. We can no longer rest, but we still have Blood and Toy Ornithopter healing us and Feed healing us. And Lizard Tail healing us. Could go Fusion Hammer and just use the Dreamcatcher for more cards, but I'd prefer to be able to upgrade Demon Form and Feel No Pain and Corruption. So I'll take a Copy Dripper here. How's it going, Pricksmire? Hey there, hey there. And we can take three Elites this time. An improvement. To be sure. I guess Fusion Hammer would have been fine. <laughs> oh well. Doesn't really matter if I get no rest sites either way, huh? Can rest or upgrade. Yeah, the only three Elite Path is this one. So, the only rest action we get to do this act is Recall. Boo. Oh, there's also this path, actually. And there's no shop, though. But yeah, your option is go this line, and then you don't get to remove Decay. So, would you rather remove Decay before the bosses or upgrade a card? You tell me. Bits promotion. Lamb go in, thanks for the 600 bits. Looks like Twitch. John Twitch himself is here. Welcome, John Twitch. It's cool that we get uh, bonus bits. It's pretty sweet. Any bits over 300 gives a 10% bonus currently. That's sweet. Sweet. Uh, headbutt armor? Let's try it. No, I don't want it to die if I have to thorns. Oh, Jeff, my bad. It's Jeff. Solid start to the act. Whirlwind plus anyone? Uh, seems ridiculously good with demon form and energy generators and such. Yes, I'll take a whirlwind plus. If only. If only I had the shops. So fight a boss for a rare relic or upgrade all my cards and be completely unable to heal forevermore? I don't think so. Like the boss. Uh-oh, it's Hexagos. Oh no. Oh dear. That's not good. Next turn could hurt. <laughs> Hopefully we draw the Impervious. Thankfully we have Secret Technique, so we're quite likely to get it. Okay, that's pretty promising. Hmm. That's a lot of damage, sir. But my face, though. I guess I'll use the Swift Potion. Super fine. There's the Impervious. All right. Totally fine.
not even close. You have 19. Oh no. Can't eat it. Disaster. And the next turn it dies to thorns. I've done a terrible disservice to myself here. Ooh. Alright, well that went badly. We do get more block via the thread and needle. I like that quite a bit. True grit ain't good enough. A claw is law. The claw is flaw. The orb walkers are law. These guys are tough. They don't even give us the benefit of giving us two relics, because they're rude. Ah, oh, we gotta play that. Me offering then. Spicy. Bonk. And pummel strike. Eat you. Well, thudding a second time. Use that to play barricade and win the fight. Good work, me. How's that for a turn one? Well, I don't have long to win this fight, actually. We're gonna get a lot of burns soon, too. It's gonna win next turn. Which I can do with Fire Potion Guarantee. Back-to-back -back rare relics from events in Act 2 always feels great. Get a Dubu doll, plus one strength for each curse we have. By the way, we have two curses. And a dupe pot. And an auto shields plus or a cool headed. I gotta say, auto shields plus seems kinda bad with barricade. Cool headed is interesting. It's like a weaker metallicize, but it's also a skill. It's a skill that draws one. So yes. I'll take it. Dark Orb seems kind of hilarious. Ooh, we could take a medical kit instead of removing our curse. Allowing us to play status cards to exhaust them and then gain block from the field opane. That's pretty sweet. We could also just take an evolve and remove the curse. Very reasonable option. How many orb slots of other characters? Zero by default. When you pick up Prismatic Shard, you gain one orb slot. So we have one orb slot. Ah. It's true we lose one strength from removing the curse, but we also lose one curse from removing the curse. Thing is, I can't actually do anything good with the statuses. Yeah, I'll take the medical kit. Keep the curse. Or, might remove it later, but not yet. Classic, fighting the, the single orb walker after the double orb walkers never fails to entertain me. Just an easier fight than we've already won. That adds more block per turn. Frosty. Oh. 
Oops. Throw an MP. Oh well. Reflex plus? I don't think so. Six passive block per turn is pretty good normally. With barricade, it's even better. Not afraid of burns at all, because we have the medical kit. They just give me a block now. And I can even use the cl well no I can't. Not with the decay in my hand, I can't. I was gonna say I can use the clash. Except for the part where I totally can't. See if we can land feed in this fight. Have you ever, ever had a successful orb base build with a non-defect character? No. I don't think I've ever done anything like that successfully. Do not think so. Yeah, where's the Dark Embrace at? That's what I'm saying. out. Keep drawing feed while it's intangible. I can headbutt this turn, it works though. Hey, there we go. Okay. Headbutt feed. We're there. Excellent. Unceasing top. Probably not that good. Pocket watch. Excellent. We play three or fewer cards on our turn, then we draw extra cards at the start of the next turn. Stack. Cute with Barricade, kind of awful with Corruption. Eh, I'll skip. Empty Body is also cute, just to, in case we get a Stance Change card, maybe. Good friend Don is here to give us $222 dollar redo. And now it's giant head time. Two. So this could be number three. I really want the Ornithor, though. So I'm just going to not play any more cards here. Probably some stuff. There we go. We'll do cool headed. Feel no pain, barricade defense. Have to wait on corruption. And then just demon form impervious, I guess. Between Art of War and Pocket Watch, we can have essentially bonus energy and draw every turn, which is filthy strong.
just filthy good. That turn was also filthy good. The best kind of dumb. Stop there for pocket watch. There we go. Delicious. And nutritious. We get a mummified hand, meaning a random card in our hand becomes zero cost after playing a power, of which we have many. Infinite Blades. Start of your turn, add a shiv to your hand, which deals damage and exhausts. That's actually kind of cool. Bat with Pocket Watch, but I'm still taking it. I like it. I like it. Take the blue key over the war paint. And our third elite will be Nemesis the Rematch. The sequel. Could have played headbutt there, but I want to pocket watch. As you can see why. Drawing the offering this turn kind of is a big deal. play the shivs every time I get them, though. When they're not particularly useful, they will be ignored. Poncho. Why does Nemesis have a poncho? Great question. We have lethal here. I want to take lethal though. Let's do this. Bring Nemesis to single digit hit points so that even if I do draw the feet on this turn, we can kill. Or plus four. Boat thingy giving free block is excellent. Turnip preventing frail with barricade is excellent. Power Potion on Ironclad into the Heart Fight is excellent. And I like both Acrobatics and Dodge and Roll here. Dodge and Roll feels really good with the Barricade. And it's free upgraded too. So let's take Dodge and Roll Plus. Six block this turn, six block next turn. Then just have a bunch of regular fights to get through at the very end here. Plus a Centennial Puzzle, even more card draw. Excellent. Get lots of stuff. Although we would gain strength if we got cursed, uh, I'd still prefer not to be.
Someone asked, would I take focus? Well, here's a defrag. I can take focus. I think equilibrium is pretty good, too. 13 block and retain our hand. No, I don't think focus is good enough here. It's funny, though. Doom and Gloom Plus also not terrible, actually. Decent AoE damage. Uh, no, Slippy Toad, you're thinking about... Um, Uh, foreign influence on the Watcher making orb cards. Orbs work totally normally with Prismatic Shard, even in base game. Terror Rash with the 10 months, almost to that year. I think EQ. Yeah, Establishment EQ Synergy, that'd be so cool. I've never actually had that Synergy work before. It's very powerful, though. Uh, give me the Pocket Watch. Give it to me. Twenty nine, twenty nine, twenty nine. That's eighty seven. One more of those makes my life just a little bit easier. Let's play three. Axe Milan, thanks for the eight months of support. Keeping it cozy for nearly a year. 50 AoE damage. Nice bloodletting feed. Seems good. Heart of Iron is back. Very good into the heart fight with the barricade. Although, is it as good as Duplication Potion on, say, Feel No Pain? Probably not. No, probably not. Alright, first boss is Time Eater. This sort of deck should crush the Act 3 bosses, gonna be honest here. I do not expect much trouble. What's so error? Is this a deck for corruption? A fight for corruption? I don't think so. Maybe later in the fight. Daily no. Daily why. Okay, upgrade the impervious. Perfect. All right, that's an okay turn one. We got uh, Barricade down. Just put Demon Form in play as well. Maybe you wanted to armaments the Demon Form? Maybe. Still good. Just punch him. Easy game. Uh, 
When in doubt, just punch him. Some more cards here. Now we can play the corruption, I believe. Both our moons are in the draw pile. You got it. Leave three cards for next turn. Sir. Dinner time. One boss down, no problem. Still got 100 health for the Awakened One here. Will be a little bit more difficult. Just a little bit. We have to rush to kill the cultists here, unfortunately. They're an immediate threat. Then we have to scale up to deal with the Awakened One. This attack quite nasty, but those both have to get put in play here. You get eaten. Good hit up reckless charge here. Okay, we don't take damage at least. Keep me block. Armaments the demon form, that's also probably worthwhile. Probably the last power we should play. Don't play the uh, infinite blades here. Even better, just delete it. Let's equilibrium, keep this fiend fire. Delete corruption and such. Seems pretty good. Job on ceasing top. Might be the only card it ever draws. Good for you. Fifty-six damage. That is. Luke lucky forty-five. Chain 2. Perfecto. Ooh. 
want to kill next turn, I assume. Although we have a hella block coming our way. Be better if we can kill and then use the blocks. Does this boss only attack? Yes, this box has a single hit attack they do and a multi-hit attack they do. They'll alternate between those, but that's it. There we go. Okay, now we win quite decisively and we're on to Act 4. The voids are added by the single attack of the second phase. But only in phase two, after you kill it one time, does it start adding voids. Okay, not too shabby. Two thump, two thump, two thump, a deep pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire, the source of this evil? You ready your big stick and slap the heart for 24, 42 damage. A good year. That's right, status effects are to be avoided. Would I change the awakened one if I could make the fight shorter? Yeah, I would. Not sure how I would change it exactly, but I would definitely want it to be shorter. Remove the regeneration, definitely. Maybe make the boss scale on its own in addition to when players play powers. Such that you can't stall it indefinitely or anything. This needs to be upgraded for the hard fight. Oh yeah, we have meal ticket. Okay, so we are at full health. Take an Evolve, we can take a Shockwave, we can take an Ori. Ori with Prismatic Shard is so cool, I'm gonna buy it. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Calc Gamble. Establishment is here, let's freaking do it. Establishment plus, um, plus Equilibrium. Let's freaking go. Battle Trance, let's go. Ragnarok, that's awesome. And yeah, take the Calc Gamble. That is sick. That is sick. Give me the Shockwave. Give me the Strike Remove. And what? Do I want a Ancient Pot over these potions? These potions are really good. The Evolve may or may not be worth picking up. It's kind of unclear. We only draw statuses one time, so it's entirely up to whether we draw the Evolve before or after the statuses, whether or not it actually adds draw. It might not. Could be a dead card, so I don't think I'm going to add it. Yeah, I'm just going to skip. Um, get a fresher duplication potion. Good talk. Ooh, baby. Oh, it's happening. <laughs> Play establishment. Play equilibrium. The power. And then I play corruption and all my cards are free anyway. What a scam. That's fine. Uh, like gamble time. Find me that barricade, hey? But that's good. Actually, this is a really good hand now that you think about it. What about this? Right here. 
So we retain our hand. And everything in hand gets discounted. So we have one cost bash, three pommel strike, free feed. Thanks to the equilibrium. That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. So I can do Bash, Cleave, Barricade, Impervious Ragnarok. Delicious. Wow, that was an awesome fight. We also lost focus, by the way. Relics to set up. Get our last two relics, Nunchaku, for energy. Bottled lightning to let us pick a skill to have in the opening hands. Offering is a pretty good one. Equilibrium is also a pretty good one. Or actually, Calculated Gamble is what I'm going to bottle here. Secret Technique might have been slightly better. I don't think it matters too much. How about we get both of them? That sounds good. The problem is this Offering overdraws like crazy at the moment, but oh well. Say play Shockwave over Uppercut. Certainly don't play both. Shockwave then offering? I guess so. There's establishment and barricade. Now we can use the power potion with the armaments here. Upgrade the power. Juggernaut plus or corruption plus? Hmm. Play corruption anyway. Or fire breathing plus, I guess is fine too. We'll deal quite a bit of damage. As much as Juggernaut though? No way. Juggernaut's way more damage. Play Juggernaut, I guess if I have to. seem like a bad thing. Let's hold off on a second, though. I'm going to play the Equilibrium instead. Let's use our Equilibrium to discount things. One cost Corruption, zero cost Shrug and Arma. Give me this. Probably going to dupe the Feel No Pain. Just corruption with extra steps. You're right. Let the Art of War do stuff, I guess. Storb is setting off the Juggernaut. Pretty great. Ceasing top.
speed. There's what, three cards? No, just two. Two cards from top this run. Bonk. Chomp. Be free, my lizard tail friends. If you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And don't forget to check out Baylor Lord Plays for variety content. Click the blue Baylor icon to subscribe.